Welcome to another episode of Fool's Ore. In this episode, we will be diving into shift registers. And how do shift registers work? And more importantly, how do USB cables transmit data? But thank you for watching this episode of Fool's Ore. Let's begin. So if you look on my desk, you'll see these three components right here. A USB, a real-time clock module, and a little encoder. But what do these three things have in common? And I want you to look at the wiring, specifically the clock module. Let me flip it. So we have the ground, the voltage, then we have the data and clock pins. Other two pins aren't as important in the scenario. But everything needs power and everything needs voltage so we can take out these bottom two pins also now we have the clock pin and the data pin so this module can send it into a microcontroller the exact time and date using two pins and it's really using one pin for the data one pin just syncs the clock of this thing um, it synchronizes the clock of the module with the clock of the microcontroller and the other pin transmits the data. That's the SDA, that's the data pin. But how can one pin transmit all the data that this module has? So if we go back in the simulation and we look at the computer that we designed, you can see that all the information is being transmitted with four pins. It's a four bit computer, so we use four pins. Nothing uses one pin and yet we are still very limited with the computational power of the CPU because we can only add numbers up really to 16. But this real-time clock module is so much more powerful than our CPU, yet it uses one pin. So how is this possible? And this is really all possible thanks to the shift register. So now let's dive into C. How does the shift register actually work? Okay, so the shift register, let's look at this one first. This is the more simpler one. So basically, a shift register takes data in and it shifts it into this 4-bit system. So we had this data thing. So let's say for clock pulse 1, the data is 0. Now for clock pulse 2, the data is 1. And then for clock pulse 3, the data is 1. And clock pulse 4, the data is 0. So we can take the data and effectively shift it along this line of JK flip-flops in order to get what the 4 clock pulse data input was. And then we can make it into a 4-bit address, just like this. So essentially, on our real-time clock module, the SDA is the data pin, and the SCL is a clock pin, and it's effectively doing exactly this right here. It's sending data via this one single pin, and we're kind of shifting it on a 4-bit or 8-bit system, which is what an um, Arduino would use, but really whatever microcontroller it is using. And it shifts it on that system, and then it sends this data or it processes the data in these four pins, just like a normal CPU would. And so we can reset it, you know, just by uh, clocking it a whole bunch of times. And then if we do it again, so clock signal one is high, clock signal two, and then high, and then off. So we effectively sent the number five over four clock pulses using a shift register and we could did it only using one pin, but the CP now knows it's the number five, which is pretty cool. So if we go into it, this is just a standard JK flip-flop. There's nothing um, special about this at all. And we just knocked the, um, the signal out of it. So I guess really is not a JK flip-flop. It's considered a D flip-flop, which would work the same way but this is one way of doing it and it works so 
Now let's go to the other one, which is opposite. So we send in a four bit input and then we serial it out. So I'm gonna use the correct terminology. So this four um, bit input is called parallel. This is parallel circuitry. So parallel in and serial out. And serial stands or it means just like one wire, one pin, which is why it's called USB, universal serial bus. So we're converting the parallel into the serial with this. So we have to first get the number in which we'll use the number 10. We store it and then we clock. So it's zero or it was zero. Now it's one, now zero back to one. And then we repeat it. We read from left to right. So one, zero, one, zero. And then we can change the number to what we want. So if we have six, store, um, reset. So now we are on this pin right here. And we get the number six. So this is my own, own version of the circuitry right here. Um, I kind of made this one up myself. But now let's look at the actual real um, shift register. And I made this one just so I can kind of explain the method behind it because they both work very similarly. And the way this works, we have these D latches which would store um, our parallel inputs. And then we have this program counter type circuit right here, which is this two T flip flops. And then we have a little um, two bit to four bit converter. And we just kind of shift which and we want to be activated high. And then we get the um, what are the D latches storing into that and, and then we just or it all into one output. So pretty standard in my opinion. Um, let's save it real quick. And yes, this is parallel in, serial out. The other one was serial in, parallel out. So this is the ultimate shift register, you could say, because it can do both. So there's a way where you can make one shift register that can do both. Um, so we're gonna do parallel in, serial out first. We're gonna do that one. So we'll have the number 12. So we press the shift button to make it parallel in, serial out, and then we clock it. And you can see the, um, I guess the wires moving to every clock pulse. So if we do it again, let's do number, let's do nine. We have to prime it first too. So a little flaw in the system is we have to prime it first by uh, shifting it, clocking it, and then we kind of start the clock algorithm. So. Um, now let's go into serial in, parallel out. So if we had the serial in, we can prime it. Right. There we go. And you can see the wire actually moving in real time. I forgot they had the little out pins. That's my bad. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay. So yeah. So it does work. If we do it again, um, serial in, and you can see it kind of shifting. And then if we do the number 12, there you go. This is the number 12 right here in all the outputs. So, cool. And then we can do the same thing, parallel in, and then we can shift it out on the main output pin, which we can say main. And there we go. So that is how shift registers work. That is how USB transmits its data um, onto the bus using just one wire. So thank you for watching this. Uh, please come back next week for more content similar to this. But thank you for watching.